I asked them about getting the 10 to 20 hours a week and I got a promotion. So they gave me a permanent part-time role. So I'm doing that part-time right now. How awesome are you? Hi, Erica. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Santa Barbara, California. It's very early, Jordan. Oh my God. It's very early, but I wanted to get up and talk to you. So I love that. We're what doing you, it. We're doing it. What are you doing in Santa Barbara? Um, I am currently a compensation analyst for a tech startup. Ooh, that's exciting. It is, but it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> what does a compensation analyst do? Tell, tell, tell the good people that listen to Work Like a Girl what a compensation analyst does. Um, well, I'm responsible for determining salary for people that um, are either applying to my company or are getting a promotion at my company um, and handling all that fun stuff. You must work at a fairly successful startup. We have 400 people and we do not have a compensation analyst here. So this, you must work for a fairly big, successful company, yeah? Yes, okay. pretty successful, I would say. That's exciting. Did you want to be a compensation analyst? How did you, how did you find yourself in this space? Yeah, um, so my heart lives with finance. Um, okay. I'm an FP&A girl. I have my business degree. Don't shame me for that. Nope, that's great. Um, <laughs> and I kind of just fell into this role because I saw that it was such a great company and then, you know, wanted to get my foot in the door um, and just, you know, kind of see how it went. Okay. And now what? Now what? You want to leave this job? You want, you want a different job at this company? Yes. Um, so I spoke to my manager and, you know, kind of let her know what the deal was and just how, you know, I love the company and I don't want to leave the company, but I just want to see what other options are out there. I didn't know that there was an opening on the finance team, so I saw this as a good opportunity to kind of put my name in the hat. And then what happened? Um, well, she was, you know, very receptive and let me know that it was going to be about four months. She spoke to who would be the hiring manager for the new role, and he also confirmed four months. So I guess my question is, how do I keep her accountable to that four months? What happens in four months? You would be eligible to get the job or apply to the job or what happens in four months? Um, in four months, they basically said that the job would be mine from my understanding. Oh, that's exciting. That's a long time away though. Jesus. Yes. So they're basically saying the job's yours next year. Basically, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Well, one, that's awesome that kind of sight unseen, you're you know, greenlit to, to make a lateral move or to make a move in the company. So you must be mm -hmm. great. Um, and congratulations on that. I think the, yeah. the thing that I would do is I would have a meeting. Have you met with a hiring manager? Um, I have not met with him specifically for this, but we've worked on multiple projects together. So he's, you know, well aware of who I am. Okay, great. So what my advice might be, and you obviously will do your own thing, but what my advice would be, would be to have a one-on-one -on -one with the hiring manager and say, okay, we've got four months until this job opens up. I'm so excited. I'm grateful to be considered. I think I'm, you know, a really ideal candidate or I'm really the ideal person to do this job. What I would also ask him or her is, what do I need to do in the next four months? What can I do to make sure I'm most equipped come January 1st to have this job? Um, and have them give you some feedback and input on that. And then I would also follow up to that meeting in writing with, hey, I'm so glad we talked. I'm excited to move into this role in January. I heard you loud and clear. I'll really work on these blah, blah, blah things between now and then. And if there's anything that I can do, experience, take part of, learn from in the meantime, I'm, I'm ready and willing. Like I would make sure you have that conversation with the hiring manager and then I would also put it in writing. Okay, um, that makes and, sense. And then I would do the same thing with your existing manager. Um, which is, hey, you know, what do I need to do to be sure that I leave, you know, whatever parts of the business you're analyzing, you know, that I leave things in perfect condition? You know, what can I be sure to accomplish for you in the next four months? Um, what is it that I can do to help train my replacement? Like ask those type of questions of your current manager and then also follow up with that manager in writing. 
And then the last thing, because your company seems to kind of have its shit together, is I would make sure you meet with HR and that your HR person, like you may have an HR business person that's associated with the finance group or the HR group, that they are also in the loop. They know what's happening. They're on board and they're confirming it for you. Obviously, nothing in life is a given. You know, there's no guarantee that you're 100% getting this job in you know, in four months, you know, we could be hit by a crater, you know, Santa Barbara goes underwater, who knows, I don't know. But I would make sure that you just check all the boxes with all your constituents. HR is a constituent, the new manager is a constituent, and your current manager is a constituent. And make sure that you're like ticked and tied with all of them. Okay, that's great advice. Awesome. Thank you so much. Good luck. Congratulations. And I'm happy for you to take a new job next year. Hi, Erica. Hi, Katie. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. I'm so glad I got through because I have an exciting update for you from Ooh. when I called you back in May and you gave me some awesome advice about my internship ending. So oh my I got wait thank you cards. Wait, Katie, yeah. describe what just for the people listening, describe your last call. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when I called in back in early May, I had just finished my one year internship with a financial institution up here in Canada. And I asked Erica, what can I do to stand out and hopefully land that full-time offer because I have one year left of college up here in Canada to finish. So I wrote the thank you cards. They loved it. They said they hadn't received one of those in years. So that was awesome. Such a great piece of advice from on your part. Awesome. And then I asked them about getting the 10 to 20 hours a week and I got a promotion. So they gave me a permanent part-time role to lead a program which combined my love of sports and then business at the bank. So I'm doing that part-time right now. How awesome are you? (laughs) So great, I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Way to go. Thank you so much. I I really appreciated your advice. It was perfect. It, It worked and I got the exact result I was looking for. Um, but now I need more advice. Oh, all right. Here we go. The first time I need to call you again. I should be asking you for advice. <laughs> so this program is for student athletes getting their first corporate internship. So they get master class sessions. They had me kind of like as a career coach since I was a student athlete myself. And then um, they had a mentor that was a current or is a current employee at the bank but was a student athlete or a professional athlete at one point. So they were given all these resources to help support them throughout their nine to five job this past summer. And my first cohort just ended. So there's a lot of buzz and hype from leadership right now because they're like, wow, this is so cool. We're the first company to do this up here in Canada and you launched it. So we love it. But how do I use this momentum and buzz from leadership to not only help make sure next year's cohort, like the second group of student athletes that come into this program have an even better time, but also my long-term career. Ooh, all right, Katie. I think that you should, um, one, I think a really good thing to do would be to survey like the last three or four cohorts. Like take the initiative and be like, let's just survey everybody who's been a part of this. See what they liked, see what they didn't like, see what they wish the program had. And that right there is going to give you the roadmap of what needs to be done. So you don't need to like rack your brain on what needs to be improved. Like people will tell you what needs to be improved. So the first thing I I would do to really make a lasting impact is find a way to have more introspection about the program itself and to create kind of the ethos of always improving the program. And then you show initiative, you show that you're able to communicate, you show that you're able to use data to make recommendations. And then what your real what your real legacy will be and what will really be valuable to the program is what the program looks like in the future by virtue of you having have you having done this one thing. So I think that's probably the, you know, the first best thing that I would do. And then I think the second thing with that is, you know, think about yourself, like what's everything you want to achieve from this? What's everything you want to take away from this? Do you want to have a networking group after you graduate? You want to stay connected to these people? Maybe you make a Slack group for alumni of the program. I don't know. But just to start thinking more systematically in those type of things, things that you would want to take with you and things that solve th- solve problems or areas of opportunity or things that are lacking in the program today. And and I think both of those things would make the program as, as great as it can be. 
Awesome. Okay, I'll take the advice and I'll be sure to call in in a couple All months. All right, later. congratulations. We'll see you later. Thank you so much. Okay, yeah, bye. Bye. Let's go. I'm never going to have a better call than this. Hello. Oh my gosh, I got You're back. back. You cannot be a push. Nobody is going to respect you. We got to get going on that. Be comfortable when you're yeah. six, that's creepy. You're also stunting your life. I don't know if that was helpful.